Britain is in the throes of a shopaholic frenzy. We're all buying more stuff than we could ever possibly need. I've spent £100,000 easily. But what if you never, ever threw anything away? There's just so much stuff. What if instead of owning your possessions, your possessions owned you? We can't move in this room, can we? It's just a pigsty in there. In this series, shopaholic hoarders get a short, sharp shock as they confront the possessions burying them alive. How did all that fit in our apartment? Good God. This is my living room. I'm sleeping on the floor. This is an extreme collector. Desperate to tackle their hoarding habit once and for all, their homes will be purged of their overwhelming hoard. DVDs, magazines, toys, clothes, the lot. Is that honestly all mine? When you see it all laying out like this, doesn't it make you wonder how you've managed to function? <laughs> oh. Experts will sell off their stuff and use the money to redesign their homes. But will they be able to part with their prized possessions? I'm not selling it for less than two, Nick. I'm sorry. It's going terribly. Will these mountains of trash ever turn up hidden treasures? How can you have 50 single shoes? And will transforming their homes really transform their lives? Oh, it's wonderful. This is the business. Oh, wow. It's like a home rather than <laughs> like a student pad. I love it. This seven-bedroom house in the Dorset town of Blandford Forum looks like a normal family home, but behind closed doors... ..it's crammed to the rafters with an unbelievable amount of possessions. It all belongs to just one woman, 59-year-old Sylvia Stewart. I really love a bargain. I can't just buy one of something. I'll go and buy a hundred of them. <laughs> The breakfast area, the conservatory and the dining room are all piled high with mountains of stuff collected over years of shopping. I think how much I would spend in a week and a bad week, it would be up to £1,000. As a nation, we spend over £2.5 billion a year on items we never even use. Sylvia's stash includes furniture, dried flowers, old books, ornaments, empty milk bottles, driftwood and bin liners full of old Christmas wrapping paper. Even the double garage is bursting at the seams. Her son David has been powerless to help his mother change. Why have you got these for? Because if I cut the top off like that and make holes in the bottom, they're little flower pots. Why don't you just buy some flower pots? My mum's in a bit of a vicious circle when it comes to buying stuff. She gets depressed about all the stuff she's got. Um, but instead of decluttering, she'll go out and buy more stuff as a, as a sort of therapy. How much of this have you got? Well, I've got a trunk full and a couple of black bags full. What are you going to do with that? Well, I might decorate a mirror with driftwood. It's a bit of bark. I feel embarrassed about the house. It's not nice. I only let people come who I know love me enough to put up with it. Widow Sylvia's hoarding makes normal family life almost impossible. I don't think I see my family as much as I could do because they don't feel comfortable and relaxed when they come over here with all this clutter. It would mean the world to me for my mum to get herself sorted out. I think we come round more often and probably socialise a lot more and have more family and friends around as well. Here to help Sylvia turn round her home and her life are Nick Allen and Abigail O'Hearn. Nick is an international dealer with 10 years' experience in the business. I can spot the hidden value in items that other people simply don't see. One man's trash is often my treasure. Over the next couple of weeks, his job is to sell off as much of Sylvia's hoard as he can. The money he raises will fund a redesign of the rooms affected by the hoard in Sylvia's home by interior designer Abigail Ahern. As a designer, the most important thing for me is to give my clients spaces that they love, that totally reflects their personality and their lifestyle, and that they respect and will not, under any circumstances, want to fill it full of stuff. Between them, they'll transform Sylvia's living space and by doing so, hopefully, end her buying and hoarding obsession. Hi, I'm Abby. Hello. I'm Sylvia. Nice to meet you. Hello. David, nice David. to meet you. I'm Abby. I'm really 
intrigued to know how you function in these spaces. So this space behind me, how do you use this? I can't use it. I just tend to go to my bedroom. I just shut myself in my bedroom. Because I've got so much stuff, I can't use what I've got. There's no space to I'm do not, it. Yeah, and I'm not living, I'm existing. Yeah. When did it begin, the kind of buying a lot of stuff? I was married to a man who didn't let me do what I wanted. He was a bit of a control freak. And also when we split up, he kept all my worldly goods. He kept everything. Yes. And then I had a relationship after that with a man who got a bonfire and built lots of, burnt lots of my stuff because he didn't want me to have any memories from my previous no way, marriage. Seriously? Yeah. And then after that, I've surrounded myself with stuff because it makes me feel secure. Yeah, of course it is. And yeah. I don't like being like this. Not at all. This isn't how I like to be at all. Do you think you have a problem with just buying too much stuff? I do have a problem. I, I mean, I can't deny it, seeing all this. Sylvia, how much do you think you've spent and um, wasted on some of this stuff that you've bought? Over the years, I've spent about £100,000 no easily. No way. That is astounding. £100,000 on just stuff that yeah. you've bought. This is my chance now, and I really, really, really want to do it. It's like a big shadow, a big weight on you, and because of that, you, you don't get the motivation to do anything else. And I want to live in my house, I want to be happy, I want to have a social life, so that's why I'm doing it now. Nick and Abby want to explore Sylvia's hoard, to learn about her and to see the scale of what they're dealing with. Nice diamond ring. Seriously? Not a huge stone, but the colour looks good. I like this. Yeah, I like that. Do you know why? The little mouse. Oh, sweet! Is Mouseman that furniture. Saw? Mouseman was handcrafted in lovely timbers, and the trademark was this little mouse that they put on all the pieces. I like the mouse. This is hundreds. Is it? Hundreds of pounds. Furniture by Robert Mouseman Thompson is highly desirable, and collectors will pay up to 25 grand for the best pieces. You'd need six grand to buy this desk from 1961. And a 1950s fire screen like this with a signature mouse will set you back the best part of a thousand pounds. Thompson was part of a whole school of furniture makers known as the Yorkshire Critters which included craftsmen such as Albert Eagleman Jeffrey, Thomas Noman Whitaker, Colin Beaverman Almack, and Wilf Squirrelman Hutchinson. So next time you see a beastie crawling up your chair, don't be alarmed, you might have just struck lucky. I found another mouse. You're kidding There's me! There's a mouse nest in here. Look. Are you serious? I think this piece is a bit later. I think this is probably 1970s or 60s. That's going to bring you some good money. OK. There's going to be a budget here. I can feel it. As a hoarder, it'll be incredibly tough for Sylvia to let her stuff go. But if she can, the jewellery and the mouseman furniture alone could raise two grand. Nick and Abby are taking the whole hoard to a warehouse. Sylvia's going to see just how bad her shopping habit has become in the hope it will motivate her to change. So this is it. The removals, guys, the packers are here. We're going to put it all into a big warehouse and spread everything out. Right. So that we can see what you've got. Yeah. Is there anything else that's going to bring some value to what I'm trying to do here to get the money for Abby? Yeah, I, th I think um, my wedding and engagement ring, which I just I took off a few days ago. Yes, the diamond ring. I did see yes. that. Yes, yeah. Well, it was my engagement ring for my husband. and. Because it's a very unusual shape, he had the wedding ring specially made to fit the engagement ring. Right, I noticed and that. It, yeah, it, it is, you know, I think it's worth quite a bit of money. I really do want to do this, and although I'm going to find it difficult, it's, it's my commitment, and I know that my late husband would <coughs> rather I did that than, than live like this. He really wants me to have an easier life and a, and a happy life, he told me that, because I, I sat with him for five days and five nights when he was passing away, and, um, yeah. We will. Oh, you make me cry now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> While the house is cleared, Sylvia enjoys some precious time with her grandkids. 
You like sparkly things. Do you like sparkly things? We like sparkly things, don't we, Zila? Oh, it's just nice to see my mum doing stuff for the kids, you know, that they can't do for her house. You can see the kids are loving it. You know, they're having a great time. That's lovely, Rihanna. It's so relaxing being in this lovely, tidy atmosphere, you know, no clutter. In fact, I feel more at home here than I do in my own home. I'm excited for what we can do for her and how life-changing I honestly think it will be. But it's a hell of a lot of work. The Packers work late into the night. Sylvia's entire hoard has been moved to a warehouse and unpacked. Just the scale of it is shocking. Filling more than 300 square metres, it includes a three-foot-high pile of used packaging and wrapping paper. Piles of paper and chopped-up calendars. What are you ever going to do with this stuff? Enough craft stuff to open a shop, including a ton of unused material. Over a hundred unopened sewing patterns, hundreds of pens and balls of wool. This is mindless. You can't use all this stuff. And a lifetime's reading with thousands of books and magazines. Over 500 packets of washing powder and nine household irons. Why do you need nine irons? The Mousman furniture and rings aside, the hoard contains thousands of mainly low-value household items. The DVDs are OK. Maybe we can put a big parcel of those together, get them into auction. This vase looks more impressive than what it actually is. They make them by the millions in China. This is nice. It's a Victorian bottle green glass paperweight. This is one, 150. By selling Sylvia's stuff, Nick will raise money for the redesign, but more importantly, stop as much of the hoard as possible from coming back. There's going to be no money in some of it. It's going to be simply a case of recycle. But amongst it, there's quite a lot of money. But when Sylvia comes face to face with a lifetime of possessions... <gasps> Is that all your stuff? ..will she really be able to let go? You going to mug me? I might get a mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now. Hordaholic Sylvia Stewart's life has been engulfed by stuff. Until yesterday, her home was overflowing with thousands of items, picked up over years of compulsive shopping. I want to live in my house, I want to be happy, I want to have a social life, so that's why I'm doing it now. Expert dealer Nick Allen is going to clear the hoard from her home by selling off as much of it as Sylvia will allow. Designer Abigail Ahern will then use the money to transform three key rooms with the aim of stopping Sylvia's compulsive buying. Every item from Sylvia's hoard has been removed from her home to a warehouse. She'll be taken there and made to confront the lot in the hope it'll shock her into changing her ways. First, Sylvia sees her house, hoard free with just the essentials, for the first time in years. <laughs> Dave, oh my God. Don't fall in the door. <laughs> Look how big this is, David. This is like another room. <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? I can't believe it. Look at the size of it. It's the size of a normal living room, isn't it? Think of the parties. <laughs> I'm more <laughs> determined now to get rid of stuff, definitely. Yeah. It's just, this is a real incentive, isn't it? Do you know, I feel like <sighs> I can breathe. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, and it feels a bit like a big weight gone off your shoulders. With the clutter gone, Sylvia's spirits are already lifted but Abby wants her redesign to have an even more powerful and lasting effect. I'm here to help Sylvia because I truly believe great design transforms lives. The minute you walk into a space that's beautifully designed, you feel elevated, happy, squishy, contented. And I think that you won't bury yourself under mounds of stuff if you have a space that you love and you respect. Having met Sylvia, Abby thinks the look that would suit her house and personality is eclectic bohemia. I've put together this mood board for Sylvia. It's inspirational, it's aspirational, and I'm going boho, arty, really funky. 
Sylvia has yellow floors and I'm going to replace them with beautiful dark floorboards. Can't afford reclaimed boards, but I'm going to replace it with laminate, which will be 700-ish pounds. I'm panelling the dining room of Sylvia's conservatory in tongue and groove. The brick that she's got is new brick, it's ugly and it's very austere and cold. And in a dining room, you want it to feel cosy and intimate. In Sylvia's breakfast room, I want to do a statement wallpaper. Almost hand-painted, beautiful, really expensive, but thoroughly will turn that room around. Hi, Abby. Hi, guys. <laughs> I can't... But I know, isn't it amazing? Oh, we can't get over it. it. Yeah, we we've just... see the garden. <laughs> Design-wise, had you had any thoughts about the kind of look and feel of the space? I've got very, very particular tastes of what I like and don't like. I do like colour, but I like harmony. I like the colours to harmonise. I'm exactly the opposite. I create in my interiors as much friction as I can with colour. Yeah, clashing colours are not me. Please don't do clashing colours. Before we get on the please don't, please don't, I get that you don't like it, but if we could just not be quite so narrow initially, because oftentimes I do it and they're like, oh wow, I see, I get it, I just didn't visualise it. Right. Abby wants to share her plans with Sylvia, starting with the breakfast room, which until yesterday was making her life a misery. Right, so this is what I was thinking, because there's not a lot of um, visual interest going on, that we should possibly think about wallpapering this wall. Yes. Um, in some sort of pattern which we can obviously negotiate, but it would just mean that it will really cosy up this nook. I'd like it to be cosy. And you like wallpaper? I like wallpaper on one wall. I don't like all the walls done in wallpaper. OK, so we're sort of all right on this. Yes. Sort of. I'm happy with that so far. <laughs> Next, the conservatory, which Sylvia was completely unable to use. Yeah. Big glass box which feels very harsh to me yes the idea is glamorous full of texture that you want to hang out in all the time lovely i don't mind this room being colorful i don't mind this being well, it's so dull now isn't it eclectic to a degree yeah it's so dull now it you is. can't it's be worse wood, wood. conservatories can sometimes seem like a cold afterthought to the main living space of a house but this stunning example is certainly not that its sleek lines and beautiful, simple design make it the showpiece of the property. The homeowner has taken a stripped-back, minimalist approach to the interior and the furnishings. By leaving the windows bare of curtains or blinds and choosing furniture which blends in with the surroundings, it makes the building itself the star. But if your conservatory is a little less opulent than this one, there are still simple ways to improve the feel of the space. Using it as a dining room will immediately make it feel more lived in and integral to the home, rather than an occasional room. And layering it with accessories will make it feel like a more relaxed environment. Here, the homeowners have been brilliantly bold. The striped wallpaper immediately turns the room from drab outhouse to a cosy, fun, extra living room. They've gone to town with an enchanting, eclectic mix of furnishings and accessories. The standard lamp and decorative wall hangings would more usually be found in the interior of the home. By using them here, it tricks you into feeling at once both inside and out. Sylvia and Abby finally move on to the dining room, and with the mountain of mess gone, Sylvia dreams of it becoming a room the whole family can spend time in. So now into your kind of kiddie hangout lair. My idea had been for a very deep rust colour. I will kill myself if we have to do rust because it's so 70s and boring and miserable with this wood. We've got to get away from brown. all the brown. We right. need to uplift the spirits. What about green? Maybe we could do a really soft green. Your eyeshadow colour. More green. like your eyeshadow colour. Oh, I love colour. that colour, yes. That sort of colour. That would be quite nice. I've agreed to things I didn't think I would agree to, but whether telling me and explaining them to me, um, I can picture them in my head. And I'm excited now. 
I'm really glad that Sylvia is a bit more on board now. Giving her a design that she loves is key to this whole process. Sylvia now needs to get to the warehouse and let go of all of that hoard. Sylvia is at the warehouse. For years, her home and life have been dominated by her hoard, so saying goodbye will be emotional. It's a huge moment for Sylvia, but will Sylvia let go? Ideally, I want her to sell everything, but realistically, I'm going to be needing to push for about 90%. The time has come. It's time for Sylvia to face her entire hoard. <gasps> Is that all your stuff? Oh, my God. That's more than two or three homes put together. That's what it looks like. Oh, my goodness, David, where am I going to begin? How are you feeling, Sylvia, seeing it all out like this? I can't believe this was all in my house. Just, I really, honestly, cannot believe how much stuff is in here. I mean, to me, it just feels a little bit nonsensical. How much could we get rid of? 90, 95? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Because remember I'm how you felt this morning when it was yes. all free of all of this stuff? You yes. said you felt liberated and there was energy and excited because we're yes. not surrounded with all of this. Nick wants to confront Sylvia's hoarding head on by challenging her to keep just one table's worth of her favourite possessions. So in this area, Sylvia, we just want the stuff that you want to keep, okay. that you have to keep. Yes. Sylvia's son David is on hand to support his mum in letting go. Obviously, going through all this stuff, she finds it difficult. So I'm trying to be as diplomatic and sensitive as I can be. Maybe one idea would be to make up a box or some stuff and give it to a charity. Yeah. To as children would love they it. They can't afford some of this. They'd love it. They'd love it. And they'd well, use and, it. And they play with it in yeah, the hospital. Yeah, they'd, they'd and, love it. Oh well, that would be nice. There are things like curtains that I don't want. Definitely don't this, want. This is too much. It is too much. It I'm is too much, I'm glad you yeah. can see that. Actually, there is quite a bit here that's rather dull and boring, isn't it? Look at yeah. that. Sylvia's commitment to change doesn't make letting go any easier. It's trying to get out of this mindset I've got. I've got to think that this is a fresh start and if I get rid of all this tacky stuff and all that stuff I've got too much of, I've got room to buy really nice things. That pile of stuff there. Well, that is, I can think that's mostly rubbish, to be fair. I don't need it. Yeah, so out of this stuff, we yes. can sell the air conditioning machine. Yes. The rest of it we can either put in a pile and sell or give to charity because you don't need it. Yeah, this pile over here, you do what you want with it. So we're, we're all cool to get rid of this? Yes, you can have all of that. Everything in this pile we can go. Can Everything go. in this pile can go. Slowly but surely, Sylvia embraces the process whittling down her hoard to what she can squeeze onto one table. The important thing is, everything on this table is stuff that you're going to use yes. and you like. And I like, yes. The stuff that we've left behind is stuff that you don't need and you're yes. not going to use. No. And some of it you don't even like. No. Sylvia has done amazingly well today. I see it that there are three avenues available to me now. We've got the Mouseman and the Gold Rings. We need to find a dealer or dealers for those items and get the most money I can. Then we've got things that are worth a couple of quid to a hundred pounds. Get that stuff in a general auction where bidders will buy anything. And then we've got all that packaging, all the stuff that Sylvia would have recycled had she got round to doing it. We can get rid of that stuff. And then hopefully the situation's dealt with. If Abby is to give Sylvia the makeover she wants and deserves, Nick needs to maximise the value of what Sylvia is letting go. And it's vital he makes some volume sales quickly. This is Maidstone Auction. It is perfect for Sylvia's stuff. I've been coming down here for years. They have 2,000 lots here. It gets turned around in a two-day period. They have everything from items at £2 to £2,000. It's broad, it's unique. The place is fantastic. With low-value items like DVDs, toys and common furniture, it's challenging to make top dollar. But there are many ways to clear your clutter. If you want to sell your stuff, try a home sale. In America, where they're called garage sales, they hold them in their front yards. But given Britain's chilly climate, you might want to turn your front room into a shop with everything up for sale. 
It's hard work, but at least all the cash goes straight into your pocket. Get your friends to spread the word and put a big sign outside on the day. Everyone loves and knows it, so expect a crowd. Online auctions are brilliant, but they can be a hassle. If you can't be bothered doing it yourself, get an agent to do the hard work. For around 30% commission, they'll pick up the stuff, photograph it and manage the sale. Easy. Finally, nothing beats an old-fashioned auction house. Expect to pay 25% in commission and fees and avoid putting on high reserve prices. A reserve is the minimum price you're willing to sell for, but if you want to be sure of making a sale, keep it low. At Maidstone Auction, Sylvia's things have been divided up to be sold in 200 lots. Hi, Nick. How are you? Nice to see you. Like I'm going to the dentist. Nice to see you. you right, Nick? One of the goals today is raising as much money as possible, but the real challenge for Sylvia will be letting go of her treasures. So really, if we can get this lot gone, mm. that's the plan. We don't want this stuff back now. This is the stuff you really no, I didn't want. I, I really don't want stuff back, but I want to put the reserves on things. You know, things that I really like, because I would rather sell them myself than let them go for a pittance. Well, look, is we're here any... at the table and chairs. What do you want for this? Well, I need a reserve of at least £300 on, on the that. table and four chairs. Yeah. Sylvia spent tens of thousands of pounds on her hoard over the years, but sadly its value now is a small fraction of what she paid. The table, you're going to struggle at three. Right. You're going to struggle. This 1950s Angle Poise hospital lamp might sell in a shop for up to £100, but at auction, people expect to pay around half of what the retail price would be. Well, I want a £100 reserve on that. You want a hundred pounds. I am not going to change on that. When I make up my mind about something, that is it. Sylvia's high reserves are a symptom of finding it hard to let go. Nick will need to give her a bit of tough love if he's going to help her shift her stuff. Have we agreed fifty pounds reserve on that? Let's sell it for forty. No. Get it gone. No. Fifty. Get it gone. Fifty. Forty-five. Give someone else a chance. I give don't want to give somebody, chance. this is my chance, this is about me. I'm not made of money, I'm not a rich woman. Can't panic, tell me Sylvia, I can go don't panic, with this. don't oh. panic. Relax, relax. Sorry, I've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Just relax, relax. I feel so out of control. But it's all part of the process. I know. You, you've got to go through this emotion in order to make a change. I know. It's going to be positive in the end. Oh. Although she's desperate to be free of her hoard, this is the toughest part of the process for Sylvia. I can understand her nerves. She is a serious hoarder. So to let go even this much is progress. It's just the emotion of things I like going for a pittance. It feels like people don't respect what my stuff. But Sylvia's committed to change and goes ahead with the auction. We'll start then with lot 1,001. Five pounds, okay? Five pounds. Of an hour, five pounds the cabinet. I'm beginning to feel stressed again because I'm seeing pieces of furniture going really, really cheap. So I'm a bit worried now that maybe I might not get enough money for the makeover. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, ten pounds, two, two pounds. Two pound these, one pound, two, three, uh, two pound, yours for two pounds. 40, 20 pound this one, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. I'll oh, faint in a minute. 25, 30, pound only, pound clears up, pound, now uh, one pound, all together, one pound. You know, one pound See, there's always, there's always somebody that will clear the stuff up though. That's the good thing. You haven't got to take it home, even if it's only a quid. For Sylvia, watching other people walk away with many of her possessions isn't easy. Next up, Sylvia's table and chairs. But with a reserve of £300, Nick is crossing his fingers. Five, uh, 90 pounds. Five now, 90 pounds. Table and four chairs. Five now, 90 pounds a set then. Ridiculous. Good job I put the reserve on it. That was, would be ridiculous, Toaster. £90 for that. I've just got to get around my head that <coughs> some things that cost me £100 have gone for a pound. 
the auction has cleared a significant chunk of her hoard forever and raised a thousand pounds towards the redesign of Sylvia's house. It's been a long day. We've basically turned the worst part of her hoard into good cash today. Sylvia, bless her, it's been really hard for her. I can understand it, it must be tough, but she's let go of, I think, 95%, apart from the few things she wanted to keep. 24 hours later, and Sylvia is still feeling the effects of selling off part of her hoard. All my rubbish seemed to sell for a decent price, and the good stuff didn't seem to sell for very much at all. In fact, it went for peanuts. It was very, very upsetting. In the past, people have taken my stuff, take, taken it away, destroyed it. And although yesterday is not the same situation, what it's done is bring up the emotions from the past, and those emotions have attached themselves to this situation now. But will Abby's redesign give Sylvia a brighter outlook? The brief that I have been sent with Sylvia's likes and dislikes covers about three pages. And will Nick come good when he tries to get top dollar for Sylvia's most valuable pieces? I was hoping to get towards 1500. Not what's going to happen. Do. Not here anyway. It's your decision. Impulsive hoarder Sylvia Stewart is desperate to free herself from her overwhelming hoard of possessions. This is my chance now, and I really, really, really want to do it. It wasn't easy, but she said farewell to a big percentage of her hoard at auction, raising a thousand pounds. The money means designer Abby can start transforming three key rooms in Sylvia's home with an eclectic bohemia theme. She's replacing the light floors with darker, warmer wood. No more yellow floor. Wow, it's coming up so easily. Abby will offset the dark, intense colours on the floor and walls with an array of bright, colourful accessories. I'm feeling anxious about it. Um, obviously, Sylvia and I's taste are dramatically different and uh, it's trying to kind of mosh the two together. It looks fab long way. I love the fact that it just makes the room go on forever. I want to paint out um, the radiator, the same colour as the wall, because the walls are going quite dark grey, and obviously having a very ugly radiator, I would just sourced quite... Anyway, having a very ugly radiator, which is white, standing out against a tongue and groove, really dark background, will just look horrible and draw attention to it. So what I normally do is paint it out the same colour as the wall so it goes away, because it's an ugly thing to make a feature on. But she's only just put these in, and I'm too scared to do it. <laughs> She has got to me, she has. I am over worrying. The brief that I have been sent with Sylvia's likes and dislikes covers about three pages. I sort of have it next to my bedside with all the things that I keep worrying about at night. So I've tried to encompass all of those things in the design and hopefully make her happy. Abby hopes reinventing these key areas will inspire Sylvia to radically alter her hoarding ways. The money for the scheme is coming from the sale of as much of Sylvia's hoard as possible. It's vital Nick gets a good price for her mouseman furniture and rings. The pressure's on me. Yeah. I've got to do the best with this mouseman. Yes. I have made a lot of phone calls regarding these three pieces of mouseman. This guy, he's got other mouseman items in his shop. Yeah. He is a specific arts and crafts dealer. Yes. And he wants some more stock oh, of this nature good. in his shop. Good. So the signs are there for yes. a potentially a good deal. Right. Bearing in mind the retail price of this furniture in restored perfect condition yes. is 1700 On the make... Mousman website. Would you take 900 I don't know until the time. I want you to try for 1000 I, I've. I'll try for more. I, I'll try for 1200 right. I really want 1000 How do you feel? Nervous, very nervous. The arts and craft movement, to which Mouseman belongs, used traditional techniques to carve simple forms from rich English oak. The movement was at its height between 1860 and 1910, and demand has risen dramatically over the last few years. This 1905 table from Liberty is priced around £600. But this Liberty side table made in 1890 would cost at least double that. A Wiley and Lockhead sideboard like this would sell for a cool three grand. 
And if you need to sit down after that, try these William Morris chairs. Although, if you own a pair, you could sell them and make nearly £3,000. If you like the arts and craft look but don't want to break the bank, get online. There's plenty of arts and craft style furniture out there. It may lack a bit of detailing, but it'll be a fraction of the price too. This is Sylvia. This is Sylvia, yeah. Yes. How do you nice. do? Lovely nice to see to you. you. Yeah, I do too. Lovely shop you've got here. Thank Love you. It. Yes, we enjoy it. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. Let's uh, show you the items that we've got. But just give me an idea what you'd be thinking for a retail price, a right. ballpark figure. Retail for that stall, maybe four and five hundred. Yep, good. Yeah, five to six hundred for that. Um, the coffee table, I would be talking eleven hundred, something like that. Right. So, um, in terms of offering you, I would be say something around two fifty for that. Then, say two eighty for that. And for this piece, six fifty. So that's about one thousand one hundred and eighty, is it? Um, I was so hoping yeah. to get towards fifteen hundred. Not going to happen. <laughs> really, not not here anyway. No. Um, it's you know I, I try to be fair on prices. I can maybe move a bit. If I go for twelve fifty for them all. 1350, 1350, just to. I'll go to 1300 and I'm really have to draw the line there. It's your decision. Off. It's your decision. Although I would have liked the 1500 I had in my head, I think we've come to a compromise where yeah. you're helping me, I'm helping you. It's a genuine compromise. Yeah. yeah. Both yeah. parties have so, to be happy. Yeah. I'm going to let you? them. I'm going to let them go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Finding the right dealer for your item is key to getting the best price. Ring ahead, don't waste time visiting a dealer with your stuff unless you know they're in the market for new stock. And remember, the best dealer is often the nearest. The greater the inconvenience to you, the less value you're getting from the deal. And it doesn't get more convenient than the Mouseman dealer's wife, who's a jewellery dealer. Sylvia is keen to show her her rings. I start with um, with this pretty ring. I'd like to put it out at around 495, maybe even 550. On that basis, um, I'd like to offer you 300 pounds. I think that's that's quite fair. I, oh, I think that's got, that is a fair price. I think well, this is more, obviously more sentimental yes. to me. I think I'd like to offer you 600 pounds. Right. So yeah. I think that's a fair offer. So that's you. 900 for the two, yes, isn't it? Yes, you're happy. Yeah, I'm happy with oh, that. Thank, thank you so you. much. Welcome you're a very me. nice lady and you're very you're fair. Sure. I like that. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Here's your cheque. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And here's the receipt. Thank you so much. Thank that you very pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you. No, so. Thank you. I feel like I won the lottery. And I'm so pleased because the wedding ring and the engagement ring will stay together. That is so, so good. If I'd let them go to Peanuts, it would have been like I didn't care about them. But because they've gone for a good price, you know, I, oh, I, I'm lost for words. <laughs> My work is done. We've raised all the money that Abby needs for the makeover. A thousand pound at the sale room, 2,200 with a mouseman and the gold rings. Hey, Abby. Hey, Nick. How was your day? Yes, yeah, good. Been to the antique shop. Okay. 1300 for the three pieces of mouse Yay! Very good. Well done. And do you know what's even better? What? Do you remember the wedding and the engagement ring and the piece of dress jewellery? She loved the stuff and just made a bid. 900. Wow. So we've literally taken 2200 today. Well done. I mean, it's amazing. I really didn't expect that. So with much of the hoard sold, will Sylvia approve of Abby's redesign? Now, perhaps I'm expecting too much and I'm going to be disappointed. Abby is putting the finishing touches to Sylvia's breakfast room and conservatory. Coming through. She hopes that the dramatic new interior will inspire Sylvia to keep her home and life hoard free in the future. I'm trying to create as many layers in this room as possible, so when she comes in, I want her to go, look at that, look at that, look at that, and then dance. Sylvia has done so well getting rid of all of her stuff. She's got hardly anything left. But I just hope that's the end of her hoarding. I hope she's changed. And I really hope she likes Abby's makeover. Three weeks.
weeks ago, Sylvia came face to face with her staggering hoard. <gasps> Is that all your stuff? But after finding it tough to let some of it go at the auction... I feel so out of control. ...a profitable trip to an antique shop helped her finally move forward. I'll go to 1300 and I really have to draw the line there. I feel like I won the lottery. Sylvia initially struggled with Abby's radical vision for her new interior. Clashing colours are not me. Please don't do clashing colours. So will Abby's eclectic bohemia redesign really inspire Sylvia to put hoarding behind her once and for all? All day yesterday, I was feeling, yeah, it's going to be great. Now, today I'm thinking, now perhaps I'm expecting too much and I'm going to be disappointed. Oh, my word. Hello. Oh, oh it's wonderful. Before, Sylvia's breakfast room was so cluttered, you could barely eat a bowl of cornflakes in it. Now she has what she's always wanted, a perfect place to start her day. And I said, oh, that's lovely. You know, I would never have chosen that colour, but it all looks so... I love it. I look at that lamp. The wallpaper makes the room look bigger. It's expensive, but every room needs one luxury item, and you can easily save on other areas. These lights add intrigue and drama, while the sleek, minimal shelf provides much-needed storage. I like that. That's yeah. lovely. That is so me, isn't it, David? You've brought light and colour into it. It's lovely. No, I love it. Love it. And it feels cosy and yeah. intimate. It does. It's wonderful. Oh. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? I'm glad you're happy. Of course. I'm glad I'm happy. Call on to the next one. Yes. <laughs> right. After you, Mum. <laughs> Oh, come on, I just want to close my eyes till I get to the door. <laughs> da da Open. Oh, my goodness! Before, Sylvia never used her conservatory because it was home to her hoard. She wanted a room to entertain her family and friends in, and Abby has given her the perfect space. Abby has reinvented Sylvia's old wooden cupboard by painting it the same dramatic grey as the walls. It's a cheap and effective way of achieving a stylish finish to the room. Sylvia wanted cosy, so Abby's used stained glass effect panels on the windows and a huge plant to stop the space feeling so exposed. The candles add intimacy, while the different textures throughout create intrigue and warmth. Oh, I just love these colours. You do? I love it. I love it. And you talked about blue stained glass, but it isn't. It's green with a bit of blue and... And it's butterflies in and there. It's butterflies in there. It's something I couldn't... wouldn't have put all these different colours together. I'm too... It's the, I like it like this, but I always get too organised, too... Har, too harmonised. This is harmonised, but it's so many different colours. You've... Harmonised together. But you've got lots of different levels going on, so I wanted oh, it I know. that people come in and they don't know where to look. Look at those candlesticks. You like, like those? The ball candles. Oh, love them. So yeah. should we do this section? Yes. Oh, this oh. is... Oh, what look! <laughs> Sylvia could never use the old dining area as it was buried under mounds of stuff. Now Abby has given her a space, the whole family can enjoy together. The tiny sofa and small tub chair, alongside the large lampstand, play with scale to create an Alice in Wonderland type magic. The bookshelves create order, stopping it from feeling too childish. And the introduction of animals, the owl and the butterflies, help lighten the mood. Oh, look at that little sofa and the That's table and the chairs. Oh, that is lovely. That is so different. The radiators do look lovely painted the same as the wall. They do, don't they? They make yeah. a difference. There's nothing I don't like. Yay. Well done. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> you have been wonderful, Abby. Thank you so much, because you seem to have got inside my head. I love it. It's different, it's cool. elegant, it's artistic. Mm -hmm. 
I just love it, all of it. The whole journey and all the roller coaster journey has been so worth it to come to this point. That makes every second of it worthwhile. Oh, thank you. <laughs> to have this and to have got rid of all the cl cl clutter, it's, oh. <laughs> it's like all my Christmases rolled into one. Can we have a hug? Yeah, <laughs> and Dave. Yeah. Thank you so much. I feel like I'm in a dream. Like I'm floating around in a dream. I, I'm almost afraid I'm going to wake up and this isn't real. I can't believe it's happened now. And I can't believe that I love it all so much. I'm happy that Mum has, has, has got this wonderful home now, this wonderful space to live in. And secondly, I'm happy that I can come here and enjoy it as well. I think it went very well. What a turnaround. You see that reaction and you actually just forget about the stress. For me, it's more about seeing her. That's the real Sylvia. We didn't meet that woman. That's not the person we met. That's a completely different person. The transformation is lovely, but the real joy in it for me is having got rid of all that stuff.